the structure that you guys have put together, um, it has impressed him. Is that sort of the pro background that all of you have had to, you know, sort of be very structured and, um, you know, exacting about where you want these guys to be and what you want them to be doing? Well, I think that that's part of it. <clears throat> um, the other part is just from a compliance standpoint, you have X amount of minutes to work with every day. So we need to be efficient when when we're on the field and what we're doing. And I think a big part of that was to give these guys practice practice plans um, so they know what we're doing, when we're doing it, and how long we're doing it. And, um, you know, for, for us as a staff, we don't want our guys going out and doing eye wash. Mm -hmm. uh, if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do things right um, and get in, get off, and on to the next thing. So um, all that encompasses, yeah, that's a little bit of pro background, but also trying to deal with the college rules and, and the amount of time that we're limited to. How have you seen guys respond to that structure and just kind of the improvement that has been made in the last couple of weeks with, with that in place? Well, I think the, the, the response has been overwhelmingly positive from, from having the structure and having, um, you know, a, a understanding what they're expected to do every day. Um, and from that standpoint, that's, that's a good starting point. Now it's just a matter of going out and executing what we as a staff and, and as a team want to want to be able to do on a daily basis. Willie, where do you feel like the group as a whole is in terms of pitching? You brought in a lot of veteran caliber transfers with Luckham and Tolik. Where do you feel like those guys are at and how they've sort of gelled with the rest of the group? I think the guys we brought in, not just those two, but, but several of them that we brought in have, have meshed very well, um, are throwing the ball pretty well and, and throwing strikes, which is good. Um, there, there has been, you know, we're still feeling each other out as far as defining ultimate roles for them as we move forward. but. Um, I think from a standpoint of knowing where we were going to be as, as a staff as a whole coming into this year with uh, the injuries that we had last year and, and the, the draft, you know, gotten us pretty good. We knew we were going to need to fill in with some guys that had some experience um, <clears throat> and not having any freshman arms on the roster coming into this year. It's a challenge, you know, but, but from that standpoint, we wanted to bring in some guys that had some experience and, and had been under the lights before. and. Um, they have fit in very well and bought in very quickly with what we're trying to do. So <clears throat> um, we're anticipating good things out of them and not just those two. You mentioned over the summer when we last talked to you that you'd be learning some things just about coaching to serve on the fly and as the job goes along. Are, are there some things that you're starting to learn just about, hey, this is kind of how it is right now, just as you kind of go throughout this fall schedule? Every day, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's something new every day, and there, there's a lot of fires to put out, um, you know, on a daily basis, and there's other ones that you got to light and get going. Um, and I think juggling, you know, the time constraints, and, you know, for me, I, I'm, I'm a worker. I want to get out and work nonstop with these guys, and but understanding that, hey, we got X amount of hours, and we're very uh, dedicated to understanding and abiding by the rules, so we have to you know, live in those parameters, which is, um, you know, I'm used to going out and spending as much time as it takes to fix things. But, you know, from that standpoint, we got to be very careful on a daily basis how we can improve incrementally um, to stay within those rules. So that's, you know, been one of the big challenges, um, you know, and then obviously kind of learning the personality of these guys, what makes them tick, uh, what motivates them, that type of stuff. And, um, you know, it, but that's the challenge that I enjoy. For Connor Davis to go through that injury, then stay through a coaching change, um, and bring his experience in a bat, a big bat. What, how much does that add to what you've already got with Long and McLean and some of these other guys? Well, I think uh, it's a testament what kind of young man he is um, from a standpoint. He's been through a lot. You know, he, he's um, had years taken from him from from the COVID stuff, and then from a health, you know, uh, unfortunate injury last year, and has been through an awful lot. So. Uh, having that leadership in the clubhouse for me is paramount and huge. Um, he understands what we as a staff are trying to do, and it's it's no secret he's our leader in the clubhouse. So um, having that leadership down there and keeping guys motivated, and keeping, the biggest thing with him is holding guys accountable. He understands what, what we as a program, the direction that we want to go, and, and holding guys accountable for what they're doing is, is very important, and he's a big part of doing that, and he's the un undoubtedly the leader down there so guys listen when he talks which is huge <clears throat> and just his offensive ability too what he brings from well his first play. game out um, after missing a long time um, had 
two home runs and nine RBIs in the first game back. So that was pretty, uh, pretty emotional. I mean, you know, from not only from his standpoint, but you know, me trying to understand everything he's been through in his life and specifically the last couple of years. It's kind of an emotional day. Our first scrimmage, he goes out and, and has three extra base hits and. I don't think I ever drove in nine RBIs in a, in a year, <laughs> let alone in a day. Um, so for him to come back and have that kind of day, it just shows, you know, the resilience that he has when it comes to the to wanting to be really good at what he does. What he does. What's the catching situation looking like? So there are four listed on the roster, and is Nate Baez, who saw time there behind the plate last season, is he in the mix at all? Uh, the, all four of them are in the mix. Um, you know, we don't have a definite starter there right now. Um, it's it's kind of a and we you know. First thing I will say on that, we got to get better um, behind the dish. That's one area we need to, of many, that we need to improve. Um, but Nate is, you know, learning the position. Um, we have two freshmen, you know, they're coming in that uh, this is a whole new world for them. Um, not only from a standpoint of first time away from home, first time in a college atmosphere, first time where they're coming and playing against people that are way better than them for the first time in their life. So it's a big adjustment as a freshman coming in regardless, but then learning in a whole new pitching staff um, you know, guys that are throwing in the low 90s with sink and movement, this is new for them, um, for the freshmen. So this is uh, an adjustment for them. And then, of course, we got Balholm that's come in as a, as a senior grad transfer. Um, and, you know, he's, he's adjusting as well, but he's doing an out, outstanding job um, from what we anticipated we were getting to where he's come from in a short amount of time has been very good. So. Uh, we're pleased with the work ethic, but we understand that's a situation that we have to get better and get better there quickly. <clears throat> How has uh, Boyd's recovery been progressing and just where is he at right right now? Um, from my understanding, it's ahead of schedule. Um, he's, um, you know, it, it's pretty cool to, to watch that thing progress. Um, and again, he's another guy that's been through an awful lot and to see him you know, the first day he played catch out here. Very emotional for everybody. Trainer, me as a coach, um, him obviously as a player. Um, he, uh, it was a pretty cool special day that he just got all excited that he got to play catch. Um, so you kind of take that for granted when you have an injury that, wow, this is, this is a, that little step is just an emotional high for him um, and for us as a program. But as far as how he's progressing, I, everything, my understanding on, on a Tommy John uh, recovery, he's ahead of schedule. Um, he's been working extremely hard uh, from the rehab process. And I think for anyone that's going through Tommy John, it's not necessarily a new surgery anymore. It's one that the, the science is there. If you put the work in the rehab, you should return stronger than you were before. And I think he's on track to do that. So um, he might be, he might surprise some people when he pitches first this year. And then as far as starting pitching goes, that was one of the areas that you guys got pretty hit pretty hard in the draft. How, how has that kind of shaped out just with fall ball getting going? And then is that something that's kind of crystallizing yet or it still needs time? Um, you know, we're still defining some roles. Um, you know, we, we have a, as a staff, we have some different ideas on which way we're going to go with that. Um, you know, we guys are going to, we aren't going to have a set you know, one, two, three, that we're like, yes, we're going there and that's who we're going with. Because, you know, we, we've had been decimated with some injuries and in, in the draft that we got, you know, hit pretty hard in that. So we're going to have to be creative with, you know, some defined roles and uh, spit and glue isn't the right word, but we're going to have to be very defined in our roles is, is how we use guys. Um, and I think if we give them specific things to, to focus on um, and what their jobs are and what their roles are defined, um, we're going to be just fine. Ethan showed some glimpses last year just with what he could do on the mound with his, his high 90s fastball before he had some, some arm soreness. Just, do you still see him as a guy that could help you two ways or with how good he is with the bat, you know, you might just have him do that instead or kind of what do you think for him? Right now we're, we're focused on him as a position player. Um, we're, we're toying, we're putting him at third base right now um, and working very hard with, with that because I think uh, that opens up some flexibility for us for some other guys as well. Um, I think we're a better team if he is able to play third base uh, and play it solid. And that, you know, that's going to take a lot of work and a lot of time. Um, but I think, uh, you know, with our coaching staff's experience in, in the infield um, department, especially, I think that, that Goffey has been working very hard and going to continue to work hard with them. And hopefully by the time the season gets here, he'll be, he'll be a solid third baseman and we'll be able to trust him over there. 
Um, but I think it, it frees us up in a lot of areas um, if he's able to do that. And so right now that's, that's a big focus with him. And um, as far as him on the mound, that's something that we've kind of shied away from based on what uh, some arm soreness he had last year when he was, was pitching. Um, he's too valuable, I think, right now is a position guy to even mess with with him, um, you know, having, having, if he were to have arm trouble again, that's just not a, not a bridge I want to cross yet, unless we absolutely need it. Um, but yeah, from a standpoint, would we like him to do two <laughs> both ways? Yeah. I mean, he's, you know, mid nineties fastball with a wipeout slider who wouldn't want that, but yeah. you know, his health is paramount for us yeah. and we want to make sure to keep that at, at the forefront of, of what we do with him. So, um, if there's any arm issues there at all, we want to take that into consideration. How has he progressed at third base and just defensively on the left side there? How have you experimented with the loss of Drew Swift over there as well? Um, how has it sort of been over there sort of toying with different um, different groups and, and, and whatnot? Well, I think we have we have guys that are definitely um, capable of, of playing over on the left side. Uh, we moved uh, Hasse over to, to short um, to see what he can do there, and he's handled that transition just fine. Um, but obviously leaves us a hole at third if we're going to do that. Um, and, you know, if we leave Haas at third, then we're going to most likely have a freshman starting at short, um, which, you know, that we got to make sure they're ready to do that. And right now they have some work to do. So um, Haas right now is, is, um, has been playing just fine at short and is going to continue to get better. So uh, who we put at third, whether ultimately that's Ethan or, or Piv or, you know, one of the young guys there, we have some options, which is good. Um, but right now we're, we're focused on everybody getting better on not only the left side, but the right side of the infield as well. And, um, you know, if our guys throw it over the plate, we got to be able to catch it uh, behind them. That's a big thing for us. So uh, lots of work to do and, and a lot of things are still up in the air a little bit. But um, early on, that's kind of how I see it going and it is having those two guys and having some flexibility with other guys that can go over there too. How about Kai Murphy? Where, where do you see him at right now? And could he be a two-way player for you? You know, Kai is is a guy that we're, you know, he, he's obviously a, a arguably our best defensive outfielder, um, and he uh, he's a guy that when he gets on the mound, he just competes. Um, not overpowering stuff, but we are, he's a guy that we just pretty much staple whatever role we put him in on the bump. He's He's going to go out and compete and give us as many innings as we need him to. But the main thing with him is keeping him, his arm healthy and in shape until we do decide to use him. Um, you know, we want to, we've been working with him since day one on continuing to make sure his arm is healthy with the bullpens and keeping him sharp and ready to go for when and if we do use him on the mound. So, um, you know, I, I wouldn't want that to be a situation we just threw him in there. We want to make sure we're diligent in keeping his arm healthy. Um, and giving him an opportunity to be successful when we do use that. But we definitely see him as a guy to, you know, possibly be a, a spot starter, midweek starter, or a guy that comes in for some long relief to eat up some innings. And we know what we're going to get with him from a mentality standpoint. He's going to compete. Um, not going to overpower anybody, but he's going to eat up some innings and, and get guys uh, confused up there, uh, for lack of better terms. So he, he does a good job mixing up his pitches. You would see him in right field, though? For, for, uh, as of right now, yeah. I think he okay. right now he's probably our our best right fielder yeah. um, from a defensive standpoint, or is our best right fielder from a defensive standpoint. He's adjusting his offensive approach a little bit from last year. We're trying to get him to stay more in the middle of the diamond um, and and do what's going to make him successful over the long term. Um, and he's bought into that, and it's it's a work in progress. But you know, so are a lot of these guys. Would you? Go ahead. I'm sorry, Joe Lamy just talked to us about uh, focusing on base running this summer and that's continued into the fall. Uh, could you go deeper into what exactly uh, the focus is? Is it reading the pitcher angles going into second base? Uh, well, base running is a very complex thing and it's something that shouldn't be minimized. Um, you know, there's a lot of elements to base running. There's base stealing, there's secondary leads, there's primary leads, there's um, you know, turns around around the bases. There's understanding the situation of the game, the depth of the outfielders, you know, when to take an extra base, when to be aggressive versus when to be on the more safe side. So, you know, once you have a clear head of all, when all the, you factor all those things in it, it you're able to react um, versus think about it as you're trying to do it. And Lamp is one of those guys that in the past, from what I've seen and early on, is that he's not 100% uh, 
crystal clear on, on what he's doing, so there causes sometimes some hesitation. So our job as a coaching staff is to give him very simple reads on a pitcher and, and what to look for, um, and just let his athletic ability take over and get him confident with what he's doing. So when he does steal a base, it's this is what I'm looking for, and boom, I'm either going or I'm going back, one of the two. Um, so from that standpoint, we've been working hard with that, but also just the way we run bases as a program um, is very important to me and, and to our staff. And I, I think uh, as an organization, you're going to get against pitchers that are, you know, going to dominate us. You know, to be you know, to be frank, um, Friday night pitchers are pretty good, especially in this in this conference. So we're gonna we're gonna have to figure out ways to to beat them versus something other than a three run home run. We got to be able to to get a guy on base, move him over, maybe steal a bag and put pressure on guys from a base running standpoint. And that's something that, that we're focused uh, heavily on. What would you say is standing out to you as, as some of the strengths and weaknesses of this team just overall? I mean, I think, um, you know, we are going to need to be able to, to be on the same page, pitchers and catchers, you know, with the fact that we have a lot of new guys' arms coming in and a lot of young guys from the catching standpoint that are relatively inexperienced. So. To me, that it starts right there um, with being able to get our pitchers and catchers on the same page um, and understanding what we expect from them uh, just to make the game and the uh, rhythm and timing of the game go smoothly. Um, when that happens, the infielders stay engaged, outfielders stay engaged, hopefully we play better defense. Um, but I think you know, that was one of the things that we're focused on knowing that we're going to have to improve on. Um, I believe that we do have some experience offensively. Um, that we're going to be able to swing the bats a little bit um, and hopefully score some runs. Um, but from a standpoint, we got a lot of work to do and a lot of facets to get better. Um, and that was no secret coming in. We knew we were going to have areas where we're going to have to improve on if we're going to want to get to the place we want to get to. So, What do you hope to see for Saturday? I'm sure you're excited just to get some people out here in the ballpark and just get to see some Sun Devil baseball. What do you hope to see just from your guys on Saturday, even though it's, it's, it's a scrimmage, but. Well, I mean, it, it'll be nice to break up the monotony of the, of the fall a little yeah. bit to, to play someone in a different uniform, which would be great. Um, you know, I, w I would anticipate the energy and the effort level to be where we expect it to be. Um, you know, how we'll perform, I'm, I'm anxious to see that against somebody else. Um, am I looking for perfection? No, I'm not. I know there's gonna be weaknesses and that's why playing another team is very helpful so we glaringly obvious things are going to pop out that, that, hey, we either were aware of or weren't aware of, and now we know where we got to get better. Um, we have a pretty good idea, I think, where those things are, but um, I think the effort level will be phenomenal. Um, there will be some weaknesses, and there will be some positives. Um, I'm not expecting us to go out and play perfect, but this will be a good early season measuring stick of where things that we definitely need to focus in on and, and get better at. So. Um, but I'm anxious as, as a coach too. Yeah. Um, you know the timing of putting signs on with Goffey at third, and and you know that rhythm and timing, and, and when to when to gamble here and put a hit and run on that type of stuff. It's you know it's a dress rehearsal, but it's kind of you know this is kind of the first one a little bit. So I'm excited on that from a coaching standpoint, um, and I'm I'm anxious to see how the guys react. Uh, you know when we when we strap it on against somebody else. Do you, um, from a bigger picture recruiting wise, it seems like you've got a lot of commitments. Um, do you, where, how do you feel about how that's coming together? You know, not just for one year, but multiple years. <laughs> well, I think that was that was the big challenge coming in. Is we had, um, you know, several several guys committed when I got here in the twenty three class, but not a whole lot in the twenty two class. And coming in kind of at the tail end of, you know, that recruiting class, that was a big challenge to try and get enough guys that are. Um, going to start building the foundation for the future in you know the, the tail half of the 22 uh, class. So um, you know we feel we've done as best we can with that, with what's been out there. Um, but we uh, we're not done. We still have some work to do in the JUCO area um, in that department. And and you know there's always guys that pop late that, that you have to be aware of as well. Um, you know transfer portal will probably be a big big uh, thing here again for another year or so. Um, until we kind of get things where we feel are stabilized. Um, uh, but, you know, from that standpoint, it, it's, again, a learning curve, a learning experience. There's a lot of new factors that are being thrown at me, not from a standpoint of, A, a first time doing it, but also, uh, you know, you have different factors that come up. Name, image, and likeness is, is a big thing that's coming up uh, as of late. And, 
you know, things that are their factors of, of always presenting challenges with the challenges that we already have. So uh, it's a constant learning curve, and but one that we are, the guys that we've gotten committed here, we're, we're very confident with and happy with. Thanks, brother. Thanks.